I now call the July 7th, 2020, 2021 meeting of the, Bloom of the Monroe County Board of Zoning Appeals to order. Uh, roll call. Uh, Bernie Garitas, I believe, will be absent tonight. Skip Daly. Mary Beth Kismarchuk. Here. Margaret Clements. Here. Vicki Sorensen. Here. We have three members in a quorum. All right. Uh, introduction of the evidence. Yes, I request that the following items be introduced into evidence for tonight's meeting. Rural County Comprehensive Plan as adopted and amended. The Rural County Zoning Ordinance as adopted and amended. Rural County Subdivision Ordinance as adopted and amended. The Rules of Procedure of the Board of Zoning Appeals in Monroe County and the uh, cases advertised and docketed for hearing on tonight's agenda. I move I mean, that we approve the uh, evidence. Second. I'll call the roll on the attrition of evidence. Uh, Mary Beth Marcha. Yes. Margaret Clements. Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. The evidence is introduced. I move that we approved the agenda as advertised and listed. Second. Okay, the motion is on uh, approval of the agenda as advertised and uh, uh, presented. <coughs> we have a vote in favor of the vote to approve the agenda uh, as presented. Uh, Mary Clemens? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Mary Beth Kamarchuk? Yes. Okay, the uh, agenda is approved. All right, uh, we have meetings from January 6th to approve. I move we approve those minutes from January 6th. Second. Okay, the motion is on approval of minutes from the January 6th meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Vote in the favor is the vote to approve the minutes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Mary Beth Kismarchuk? <clears throat> yes. Mara Clements? Yes. Uh, the minutes from January 6th meeting are approved. Okay, uh, first we have some old business and that's the Patner's, hang on, I know it's getting messed up just a little bit. Okay, there they are, not used to front and back. That is case number 1812-VAR-40. Jackie? Oh, sorry. Oh. Jackie. Is Jackie with us? We lose her or is she muted? She looks she's frozen. Uh, uh oh, she's not moving. Uh, That's a Wi-Fi issue. Well, uh, Larry, is there anyone else who can present it? Yeah, I, I can discuss this. If, okay. I think most of the people in the BZ are familiar with this case. This was a, a request for a use variance uh, for a contractor use. Uh, and Jackie, when you're back in, you can take over, but this was by Riverway Plumbing, and we've continued this uh, periodically uh, to allow construction of and relocation of the business to a new location. And uh, it's been a, a couple of years, two and a half years that this has been on the agenda and we're at a point where we suggest that we go ahead and deny the use variance. And uh, then we will, uh, that will give us the ability to uh, instigate enforcement actions. Jackie, do you have anything to add? Okay. Apparently she's off. Uh, anyway, the, we have not issued the conditional land use certificate for the new building 
uh, because uh, there is no detention on site for stormwater and the site has not been finally stabilized. So uh, again, this project, this, this property, plumbing business has been operating across the street or, or at, at this residential location for two and a half years. Uh, and they and they requested a use variance that was continued to allow them to construct a new building. Uh, we think it's time to go ahead and have a motion to, to uh, deny the use variance. Okay. And the basis of denial of use variance is this is a residential area. Uh, this building was permitted as a residential accessory storage structure. It has a uh, use that is uh, an economic use for the property. Uh, so use variance is inappropriate based upon the statutory requirements and the ordinance requirements. So we're recommending denial of the use variance and uh, based on the findings of fact. Hey, does any of the board have any questions for Larry? I do. Uh, Larry, to make sure this is at the old site, not at the new construction site. Exactly. The new construction site is in a zone that allows a general contractor. Uh, this is to finally terminate the, uh, the use that is not permitted under the ordinance at the uh, 5605 State, South Old State Road 37 site. Uh, again, denying the variance that was requested in 2018. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for staff? And I believe the petitioner may be in the audience as well. Yeah, I think I saw them there. Uh, any further questions for staff? I have I have Hi, Skip. I see the uh, Skip has joined us. Please I'll note, let the record show. I'll note the uh, attendance of Skip Daly. Uh, we, have, we have four members and a, a quorum plus one. Okay. Uh, um, I'm glad to be your plus one. Now, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Uh, my question, I believe, is for Larry. Um, when I was reading through this in the packet, it seemed to be that a majority of the complaint was due to the words general contractor. Is that accurate? Is, is, is that what the majority of the problem is here? Because he's classified as a general contractor? Uh, this is a residential zone and uh, the number of now business uses are very limited. And uh, uh, the- Well, I saw the use of, I saw the, in the packet, it explained the uses. It said uh, parks, it said uh, government entities, it said cemeteries, it, it, it went on and on and on with several commercial buildings it seems to me like the hang up here is just because it says general contractor it has nothing to do with the purpose of it storing plumbing materials that any one of those other purposes that are allowed would and probably are doing correct i'm not sure i understand your question the the general contractor is a specific use under our ordinance is permitted in the general business light industrial and heavy industrial areas um, there are some other businesses, uses that are allowed as a home-based business or, or a uh, home occupation. However, it's limited to, uh, as far as the amount of employees, what can be stored on site and so on. Uh, as the packet shows, there are several vehicles being stored in here. Again, this is a residential neighborhood. The building was built based upon an accessory residential story structure permit. And, uh, Again, this has been pending for two and a half years. We think it's time to go ahead and, and have a vote. And uh, we are requesting that the uh, use variance be denied. It, sorry, Larry, it doesn't seem like you answered my question. I was asking, could you go through the list for us and talk about the other, because I, you know, it was <laughs> on the record, but um, you, you didn't answer. Are cemeteries and parks and government service buildings and other, and other things permitted in that specific uh, zoning. You know, I, I can't tell you offhand because I don't have All right. a table. In All, right. All right. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and say yes, because that's what I read in the packet prior to the meeting. 
Um, so it looks like the hangup is because not what he's doing out of here, but because he's being classified as a general contractor. It seems like if this were another one of those approved businesses, it would be allowed as long as the word general contractor is not here. So well, I'm, I'm gonna, to, I'm, I'll yeah. go ahead and answer the question for you. And, and that's that's the reality well, that, that if, the hang up is because it's a general contractor. Well, and it's not a permitted use in this district. If it was a governmental. It's a permitted unit, use. It's not a permitted title. The use is defined by the ordinance, and that's what is permitted. All right. So the ordinance inadvertently does not say general contractor when it probably should. No, the ordinance defines general contractor and specifically is not permitted in this district. I'd like to hear from the petitioner and, and find out exactly what the use is before we have a vote on this. From the paperwork, it said specifically that he was using it to store plumbing materials. Doesn't sound like it's a general contractor's outfit to me. Well, if that's it, There's the picture of the, uh, the vans and the storage. Well, all right, I, I don't know how recent that picture is or what that's depicting. Let's hear from the from the petitioner himself. Well, okay. The uh, question: Does anybody else have any more questions for Larry? No. Okay. Uh, is the petitioner here, and would he like to speak? Yes. All right, sir. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. State your name, sir. Uh, Neil Patster. Okay. Welcome back, Neil. Uh, what would you like to say to us today? Uh, this building was originally for storage, uh, for plumbing. Um, you probably heard the story before. It's all recorded. Um, uh, I worked out of my home office for many years. I stored most of the stuff. And my company just grew crazy. And next year, you know it, I needed more space than just my home. And so we had, I had two offices built in there. Primarily, my main office is still at my home, but I had other people working in there. Um, I believe I've never had a complaint that I worked out of there. Uh, I, right now, I'm in, I'm, a, I'm about three to four weeks of finishing my building across the street. It is up for sale. It is, we are moving things out of the pole barn as of right now. Those vehicles, I think there's, it's, there's one now parked there. Um, it's got some material there. Um, but as of right now, I just finally got my storm retention uh, cylinder set. Uh, so I'm picking that up. Uh, Huntley is going to be installing that next week. I got a couple of guardrails to get my occupancy. Um, I'm almost there. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for the petitioner? I do. Uh, Mr. Posner, it's good to see you making such good progress. Every time I drive down South Walnut and I see your new digs, it looks pretty impressive. And I want to congratulate you on the um, progress you've made. Um, do you think that um, you can get this done by the date that the, um, that the county is planning staff? recommends the cease of activities where uh, of your old location do you think you can get this done what date is that um no i i'd have to de defer to larry because i'm switching between about four screens here um larry could you uh say what date by what date they'd need to cease and desist well if you want to continue us to the august meeting the bca uh -huh. and give him additional 30 days, that's fine. Uh, Jackie's more familiar with this case than I am. Uh, but uh, there, basically, it's time to wrap it up and yeah. turn the site to a residential use. Uh, yeah, and that, that's been the plan, plan all along. And we're trying, you know, there was a pandemic and things didn't move as fast as we wanted to. And uh, so, uh, you know, I've, 
I myself, as a member of the BZA, have no objections to continuing it to the August meeting. But uh, you think you can get this done pretty soon, Mr. Posner? Yeah, I've, I've only got, like I said, my storm retention just came in. That should We should be done with the stormwater system. The only thing I won't have done is the landscaping, uh, just because I just can't find anybody to do it. Um, that's the only thing. I'm going to start bringing black dirt in, but the landscaping will not be finished by that date, which I did talk to Jackie. She said as long as the storm and the guardrails and everything for opening, she would, you know, uh, postpone it or, or extend the, make an extension for the landscaping now. Well, in August isn't an ideal time to plant, but um, I know well, you're tired of coming before us. Typically, we, we will, if everything else is done, we will grant a conditional land use certificate for landscaping because it's not uncommon for there to be delays in, in getting landscaping completed due to a shortage of plants or the weather conditions or the availability of landscapers to do the work. Well, that I sounds... Uh, Go ahead, Margaret. I'm sorry. No, I just, I just think... Uh, all of this sounds reasonable, and I think that the county is getting a little tired of of um, managing this case. And Mr. Posner's um, intentions are the best, and you know it just has been a little slower than we expected. So uh, I, I'm uh, whenever we're ready, I'm um, I'm ready. To, you know, after you hear from proponents and opponents, I'm ready to make a motion. And Margaret, this is Rebecca speaking. Um, hey, I Rebecca. just Hi there, um, Anne just added this to the chat, but for those who can't see, um, Jackie was having tech problems where she was, and so she is en route to the office now and should probably be joining back into the meeting here shortly. Okay, I, I, is this something that then we should uh, move on to the next case and then come back to Mr. Posner? Is that a, an allowable thing? I, I don't think there's any need to do that if if it's the consensus of the BCA to uh, continue to the next meeting. Okay. And I move that we continue this to the next meeting. I second. Okay, I'll All call right. the motion. I'll roll, Larry, please. Okay, uh, the motion is to continue uh, number 812-BR-40, Passenger General Contractor Use Variance, uh, to the August meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Vote in favor of the vote to continue. Uh, Skip Daly. Um, yes. Mary Beth Kuzmarczyk? Yes. Mary Clemens? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Uh, the case is continued to the August meeting of the BCA. Keep right. up your good work, Mr. Posner. Just keep it, keep it up and keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have, make sure I get the right one, uh, case numbers. VAR-21-23A, dash dash VAR-21-23B, dash dash VAR-21-23C, dash dash and Drew, I believe this is you. Um, all right, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so this is the Perry buildable area, 15% slope variance, Perry eco area three, 18% slope variance, Perry front yard setback variance. Um, it's all located um, on the 3300 3, block of South Spring Branch Road. It's in um, Perry Township, section 13. All right, so a little bit of background here. Um, there are those three design standards variances, as I stated. Um, each of them from chapter 804, 825, and 833 respectively. And their purpose is to construct a 2,184 square foot single family residence um, with an attached 672 square foot garage and also a 264 square foot elevated covered deck and a 900, uh, 192 square foot elevated deck, um, all to be located in slopes greater than 15 and 18%. Um, the proposed structure will also encroach approximately 20 feet into the required 25 foot setback. All right. Um, so 
Previous conversations with the uh, planning director revealed that uh, the slope waiver from Chapter 804 and the slope exception from Chapter 825 would not be granted for this property. Um, you can see that discussion in Exhibit 7. Um, uh, during the initial review of this uh, petition, planning staff had a difficult time determining whether or not the property is a legal out of record. Um, we are left to assume that it is, but the deed record is um, um, not substantial. Um, so there is still some uh, a little bit of doubt here regarding the deed record. Um, <clears throat> some little history for the variance requests. Uh, the buildable area, just 15% slope. The proposed location is greater than that, so it triggers this variance. Um, and then there's also areas that it encroaches into the 18%, which is why the Eco Area 3 slope variance is here. The front yard setback variance was originally recommended by planning staff um, to shift the whole structure forward. Um, so it would be out of the buildable air or the, the steeper slopes. Um, so to minimize disturbance, push it a little bit forward. Um, so that was staff's recommendation for the petitioner to add. Um, <clears throat> and um, let's see what else here. Um, uh, last time we heard this uh, briefly, um, it was because, uh, well, it got continued, I should say, because uh, the Monroe County Health Department, a couple days before the meeting started, stated that they did not have a septic permit on file for this uh, site, and we're not sure if there would be a site suitable for the installation of a septic system. Um, so we had to continue it to this meeting, um, but since then, uh, the planning department has received a septic renewal permit from uh, the Monroe County Health Department. Uh, there was an original permit that was on record from 2001, then it was renewed in 2006, um, and now again in 2021. Um, so we'll have that as an exhibit in this presentation and we can take a look at it as well as where the proposed location for the septic is. So here is the slope map for the property. As you'll note, um, a lot of this area is in that 15 and greater than 18% slopes. Um, the proposed home site will be up in this area. We'll see the uh, petitioner's submitted site plan here a little while as one of the exhibits. All right, so here are some site photographs. You will see here um, the petition sign in the background. Um, that is the approximate location for the site coming off of this cul-de-sac area and onto the gravel drive. And then on the right photograph here, a little bit closer, you can really start to see those slopes go down um, the closer you get into the property. More so site photographs here, just a different angle showing the proposal, uh, proposed site, excuse me, and uh, that general slope that you see that gets really uh, drastic as the farther you go. More photographs of the site. So it's fairly wooded in this area. Um, the uh, parcel has existed for quite some time. Again, we're just not 100% sure on its um, legal status as a legal out of record. There's some haziness within the deed record um, that, that we were provided. All right, here we have some exhibits, the letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals from the petitioner, as well as the um, proposed site plan here. Uh, the next page has a zoomed in version of it. So here is the proposed um, septic field um, as recommended by the Monroe County Health Department. And then here is the proposed structure um, as they moved it forward as we recommended to kind of get out of more of those steep sloped areas that are back here. But you'll still note that it's in the 15% and 18% which triggers both of those variances. Here is a build schematic for the site. And here we have the exhibit for the renewal of the septic permit. Um, so originally they had uh, the proposed building being placed more center of the lot, um, but based on the new recommendation of the proposed septic field, they had to shift it north. Um, and that's where they have it proposed now. Now, overall, um, planning staff recommends uh, several different types of uh, motions for each of these variances. So staff recommends denial of the buildable area variance from Chapter 804 and the Eco Area 3 variance from Chapter 825 in that there are no practical difficulties. Um, specifically, the slope issues can be more effectively addressed 
through the redesign of the development building or structure. Um, planning staff had communicated to the uh, owner that if they were to build up um, and not out more, um, that they would also help reduce the disturbance to the area and those slopes. Um, and that it's just very difficult for um, uh, a structure in this area based on those uh, steep slopes and being in the eco area three, which is uh, the Lake Mineral watershed. And finally, staff recommends approval of the front yard setback variance from chapter 833, um, being that the encroachment into the front yard setback would lead to less disturbance of the sloped areas than previous uh, rec uh, proposals and that the alignment of the structure with other residences along South Spring Ranch Road would be um, would be good. So now I will take any questions. Any questions? Does the board have any questions for Drew? I have a question for Drew. Uh, Drew, uh, I saw on some pictures of other houses uh, on close to the property. Are they on a slope or do you know if they were ever approved or what construction they were? That's a good question. I think that um, on looking at previous um, sloped maps for the area, um, it is likely that a lot of these structures were built prior to the 15% slope regulation. Okay. Um, so that they uh, were likely able to do some grading and level out some areas. Um, the subdivision has existed for quite some time. So it's rather old. Um, so uh, definitely there are, um, likely homes that have encroached into the 15%. But again, when those homes were built, uh, the 15% slope provision was not in place. Um, the 15% slope provision came into effect in 2015. Um, and then the 18% with the eco constraints layer, everything like that, that's a lot older. Um, so it's possible that um, some of those homes may have ran into that issue, but I can't speak for all of them. Um, okay. So. Okay, thank you. Any more questions for Drew? Okay, seeing none. Yes, it. yes, I, I do. Oh, I'm sorry, Skip, I missed your hand up. Go ahead. Hi, Drew, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, real quick question, um, what is the slope in the first denial and what is the slope in the second denial? I, I know you said it's in violation of the 15, but are we talking? 10 degree, are we talking half degree? What, what, what are the actual slopes, please? Sure, um, so if you're looking at this slope map, uh, this is generated from the county GIS and the uh, buildable area layer. Um, slopes greater than 15% are this um, sort of yellow green into yellow, orange and red. Um, so you have the blue and then that light, lighter shade of green, that, those two are okay for building. But as soon as you hit this yellow, red, all of those colors, those are the slopes that are um, greater than 15% and so forth. Um, the, the, that's measured, slope is measured, uh, I think, I believe it's 50 feet. Um, and <clears throat> according to chapter 825, at least, that's how it's measured. And these pixels are 10 by 10 meters. So there's a little bit of um, you know, discrepancy here with these, but um, you'll see, You'll note from the proposed site plan that the structure is going to go right in here. Um, and then also in the proposed site plan, um, you'll see the delineation of the 15% by the surveyor. So everything um, east of this 15% line is uh, encroaching, if you will, to those slopes that are measured 15% or greater. Um, they don't have an 18% line in here, um, but you'll note that these contour lines here are rather close. Um, so uh, I, I presume that the 18% is probably starting right in this area, just from, from looking at it briefly. Did I answer your question? Could you put your mouse again where you and hold it there where the 18 was? Um, they don't have it delineated, but I'm just eyeballing it here based on the uh, adjacency of the contour lines. So I would say likely in, in these areas here. See all these contour lines, how close they are. They just keep getting closer and closer. Okay. And that's where the garage is proposed, correct? Yes. So we have the proposed garage here and then the rest of the proposed residence as well as the proposed 
uh, so, elevated deck. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look like any of the proposed house, just the proposed garage is in that 18% area. Is that correct? So you'll note that the contour lines continue north-south here um, and that their proximity to one another are relatively the same as they are up here and down here. Okay. Okay. Plus um, so it's pretty much a lot of this area is greater than 18%, I would say. All right. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Margaret, you have a question? Oh, I'd just like to ask staff to review uh, the importance of uh, the um, n not in, in eco areas so close to our water supply, what the purpose of the slope uh, constraint is and how how it's important for the protection of our communal water supply. Yes, that would be an excellent idea to review that for new members. Is that something you can do for us, Drew? Yeah, um, and I'll, I'll have Larry chime in if I miss anything specific to Chapter 825, but more or less Chapter 825 um, offers some protections of sloped areas within a certain uh, proximity to Lake Monroe. So there's a gradual increase of, um, or decrease, I should say, as you move away from the lake from protections of slopes. Um, so area one is protecting anything greater than 12% slope, and it protects it from any type of land disturbance um, without receiving first a variance or an exception approved by the um, planning administrator. Um, so those um, protections are based on a number of things, including um, soil erosion, um, as well as um, soil uh, um, sedimentation into the lake, um, other um, factors or impacts that come from um, um, activity, human activity on these sloped areas. Um, so area one is 12% and more, um, and then area two is 15% or more, and then finally area three is 18% or more. And again, each of those areas, it's all based on um, land disturbance. Now, um, for the 15% slope, um, regulation as it stands alone, which is adopted in 2015, um, that is just for um, structures. So um, other things can be built in 15%, like driveways, um, other types of um, development. It's not strictly to land disturbance. Um, so that was a little bit more uh, relaxed because it's countywide, um, but it has some of the same um, rationale behind it, meaning that um, it's based on soil erosion, um, and other environmental uh, factors. I'll just, I'll just add a little bit. The, uh, the idea of not having vegetative removal and avoiding soil disturbance, uh, the concept is the greatest threat to Lake Monroe is sedimentation. And by limiting these areas on steep slopes, uh, these soils are highly erodible and they're more erodible as the slopes are steeper. And so if we can retain the tree cover and uh, avoid uh, disturbing those slopes, uh, that basically creates a area of protection for Lake Monroe from disturbance. I, I will note, and uh, Daniel's here if he wants to comment on it, I believe the slopes on this site uh, fairly rapidly go into the 30 and 40%. Uh, 18 is just the start of the regulatory the actual slopes here, I believe, are probably 30 to 40 percent on down that hillside. It's a very steep area. Uh, the existing houses along this road, this is a rich top. Uh, as most development has occurred in this area, it's been on the rich tops because those are truly the buildable area. Uh, when we did the buildable area ordinance, uh, the idea was these are areas where construction is appropriate. Uh, and affordable. And uh, as you can see, the blue areas across the road and, and up and down the road are where the existing houses are sited. Uh, this is a lot that has very limited blue area. Uh, and for that reason, I think it was probably not developed uh, over the years. Uh, and the age of the subdivision is probably going back to, the, I believe, the 1970s. Thank you, Larry. Uh, <clears throat> Adrian, I've got a question. So uh, you're saying that the slope issues can be more effectively addressed through the redesign 
of, of the uh, structure. Is that correct? If they designed the structure and placed it differently? Yes, um, planning staff believes that um, the size um, and the overall design of the structure could be modified that could further reduce um, the uh, disturbance of these slopes. Okay. Is there any further question for staff? Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Let me see. Are you taking comments from other um, people? Hello, can you hear me? This is Todd with Smith Design Group. <clears throat> Hi, Todd. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you, Todd. Yes, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the petitioners. Um, I'd just like to thank planning staff and the BZA for, for hearing their petition tonight. Um, just, just a couple things here of note. Um, you know, planning staff did recommend a, a couple changes. Um, they recommended moving the house, which, which we did do. We not only moved it forward, but we also moved it north to the north setback line, which allowed for a smaller driveway and, and less land disturbance as well. Um, the, the reason that the couple does not want to redesign the house, um, they're, they're 65 and 70 years old, and they really do not prefer to have steps on their main level. Um, with their age, they just don't want to walk up and down steps. Um, this, this also matches really well with the other houses on that street. So on that street, there's eight current homes. The average square footage of those homes is 21, 22. And what, what the couple is asking for is, is 21, 84, um, which is very, very similar to the other homes. Um, also, as well as, I don't know if, if Drew can go back to the, um, the site plan or not, but on the site plan, we show the distances of the other homes to the, to the edge of pavement, and they're all plus or minus 40 feet, and, and that's what we're, we're looking for as well. And I, and I know, I believe it was, was Mary Beth that asked about the other homes in there, and, and if you do look on just going off the, the county GIS, of those other eight homes, it looks like at least half of them, you know, were built in some type of, of the slope restricted area. At, at what time they were built, yes, I don't know, and if the slope restriction had built, but if they were built today, they would have similar issues. But all in all, I mean, I, I just think that, you know, we, we, we did, you know, we worked with planning, I think, you know, to, to move the house and make it less disturbed area. Um, you know, the, the couple would consider a second story, but but right now that they just don't prefer to have steps on the main level. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Borgman? Would anyone else wish to speak on behalf of this petition? I would. Okay, can you uh, state your name? Peter Chadwick. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, sir? I do. Thank you. Continue. I, my house is directly south of this property, uh, right about where that septic field system is going to be coming up. And I'm on 2.14 acres. And almost all our houses in this neighborhood are on plus two acres, even some even more than that. And I think that's a lot of house to put on a, a small plot. The other thing is- Are you speaking in favor of the petition or against the petition, sir? I am against the petition, I'm sorry. Okay. I shouldn't have stated that to begin with. Okay. Um, this house is gonna be shoehorned between me and my neighbor. So it's kind of tight. Um, the whole reason that we moved out here was uh, to have space and lots of woods and not have to look into somebody else's backyard. And obviously this is going to be changed if this house is allowed to be built. Also, they're gonna be a little bit closer, I think, unless I misunderstand, that they're gonna be a little bit closer to the road than suspected and none of us are up on top of the road for our driveways or our houses. 
So we would rather not have that. Okay. Does Sorry, anybody have any questions for Mr. Chadwick? Thank you, Mr. Chadwick. Is there anyone else here would like to speak for in favor of this petition? Seeing none, is there anyone here that would like to speak, anyone else here that would like to speak against this petition? I do. Okay, and- I'm uh, Sherry Chadwick. Okay, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you, ma'am. I guess my concern is, it said in the, in the packet that was sent out that, um, that the design does not minimize the land disturbance and subsequent construction activities would need to occur within the slope of 25%. I mean, and if you're looking at the map, if I understand what Drew was saying, all of that house would sit within a 15% slope and most of it would sit within the 18% slope. Our house sits directly north of that house and or directly south of that house. And it was built in the 70s in which I understand that um, we didn't have these provisions to protect our environment. And I just feel that you know, any kind of disturbance, we try not to do anything in our area that would affect the, the creek that runs behind our house or, or the land at all. Now you're talking about building a house totally within 18% of the land slope. That's not just protecting the environment. Uh, that's construction too is going to be within 25%. I don't understand that. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Mrs. Chadwick? Thank you, Mrs. Chadwick. Uh, do I ha have any motions from the board? Uh, Mark, Mary Beth, at one point I saw uh, yeah, Jill Courtney has her oh, hand Jill raised. Courtney, I'm sorry, Jill. That's okay. Are you here to speak in favor of or against the petition, Jill? I just against. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. I I um I actually wrote a letter and sent it to Drew. I don't know if he shared it. Um you know, I don't, I don't know all the technical things about the slopes, but I've, I have documents from the neighborhood from when it was built in the 70s. Um, I have lived here for a large portion of my adult life, um, and I am the neighbor on the other side of the property um, where the Chadworks are. I'm on the north side, um, and I, I, and I, and I just said I, I don't, I don't want to. Um, sound like an unfriendly neighbor when a house is, is built. I, I know it's been, the property has been for sale for a long time, but I know looking back in the documents, just supporting what the Chad said that, you know, they're, they're just not homes that are, are built on less than two acres in this neighborhood. I, you know, I echo, of course, the, um, about the, 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 the slopes um, and just, I don't know, Our, you know, it's, it's a, a neighborhood that's been here for a while and it's not that we don't welcome new kill slice um, where the homes are just haven't been built that way and that was never the intention when this neighborhood was built. Um, so, but otherwise I just, I, I echo the, the same concerns they've had. And I and I and I wrote some of those and and I you know and I don't know if I could have bought this property a long time ago and could have afforded it I would have, but I couldn't and it's been there. What the answer is, but I wish that it wasn't a house smushed into where I don't think a house should be, or was ever intended to be. 
Okay, does anybody have any questions for Mrs. Ms. Courtney? Seeing none. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak against this petition? I have just one more question. I wasn't sure because it looking through the packet, it didn't say for certain that this property is deeded correct. Um, can I, I wasn't sure about that. Can Drew answer that? Yes, um, one moment, let me pull up my exhibit here on another screen. Um, so when this first came to planning staff's um, a review, um, we, we typically for properties that are um, curiously um, formatted or their history is a little clouded, uh, we like to perform a deed history research. Um, and from the deed record that we were able to provide, um, as well as um, some of the materials the petitioner was able to provide, um, it appears that the uh, a previous owner under the name of White um, purchased the tract to add uh, to their 2.14 acre tract to the south, which is now owned by the Chadwicks, um, and that the two tracks were later sold separately. Um, so um, this um, 1.33 acres and uh, versus the 2.14 acres of the Chadwicks. Um, so um, how those were sold separately, um, <clears throat> we're not sure of. The deed history kind of gets clouded there. Um, there is um, no city or county planning department sign off on any of those deeds um, that I stated. Thank you for answering the And uh, just to uh, amplify a little bit on what you said, these, these areas were not developed as platted subdivisions. Uh, individuals basically received the lots as meets and bounds, and they would add to the lots uh, through a meets and bounds deed. Uh, so there are no platted lots. So it makes it somewhat difficult to, to uh, try to ascertain what the intent was you know, nearly 50 years ago when these, this area was developed. And so whether this was meant to be a separate lot or was merely added to the white lot and then somehow improperly uh, severed from that lot sometime later. Uh, but again, we, we have been unable to find anything in the record that will definitively show exactly what happened. Margaret, do you have a question? Well, um, just based on what the neighbors to this property had, um, had raised, number one, um, you know, the small light, lot size relative to the others in the neighborhood, that uh, the minimum lot size seems to have been implemented at 2.5 acres at a minimum or something like that. And yet this one uh, doesn't require a size deviations, even though it's 1.4 acres. Um, I just have a question about that. Does this not require a minimum lot size? For, uh... Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so this uh, particular zoning district, which is RE 2.5, is in chapter 833 of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance, which is the former two mile fringe zones that were uh, transferred from the county, or excuse me, from the city's planning jurisdiction some time ago. Um, and there's actually provisions in that chapter that um, as long as other standards of a lot um, can be met um, based on its configuration, then um, the size uh, does not have to go through the variance process. So um, a lot of the zones in chapter 833 have that on them. So as long as some um, setbacks um, and other lot configurations are met, um, that the, the size does not have to be followed. But this lot isn't meeting those, uh, those that requirement. I mean, there are other issues with this lot, so it doesn't seem to um, meet those conditions. 
it's it i don't think that the the provision applies directly to um, buildable area um and i i think jackie's pulling up what we have in the language of chapter 833 um yeah so if you're looking on your screen So, um, screen, Margaret. I'll just read it aloud. Any substandard lot of record which was recorded prior to the effective date of this zoning ordinance shall be permitted to exist in present dimensions. Such lots may have reduced side yard requirements as shown below. In any RE district, 15, per, 15 feet foot minimums each side, and in any RS district, six feet minimum each side. So I guess how I stated that as long as other uh configurations or um parcel standards are met then it falls along i think that that's a little bit misguided um so it, we're literally just following what item number five here says and, and within chapter 833 about the substandard size of the lot being permitted but it doesn't say anything here about front yard setback then Right, so that's why the front yard setback variance um, for these types of zoning districts, properties in, the zone, in these Chapter 833 zones, um, uh, for example, this one still must follow um, those standards and require setback, or excuse me, variances if necessary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jude. Uh, Skip, did you have a question? I do, and I think it's almost a follow-up to what was just asked and answered. Drew, I'm going to uh, I'm going to bring you to the table one more time. So what I'm hearing from you is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is is that the neighbor objections that we just heard are not necessarily relevant to the objections uh, that uh, are being brought to us today by staff, and that's not what we're here to decide whether or not it's permittable within the, the, the two acre. It's whether or not we're going to um, allow for a variance on the slope, on the 15 degree slope, on the, on the eco 18 degree slope and on the front yard, correct? Yes, so um, as planning staff, we are uh, uh, obligated to review plans um, compared to the zoning ordinance. Um, so any kind of standards or conditions that are in the zoning ordinance, that's what we review by and are typically bound by. Um, so sometimes certain things don't meet certain standards and it's cut and dry and it says, look, it, it doesn't meet the zoning ordinance and we have to recommend denial or right. something like this. So, um, so we're deciding we're, we're not deciding anything about the two acre concern of the neighbors then. that's not that's not relevant to our decision today, correct? Oh, it's relevant in the sense that the neighbors have voiced their concern, but from a zoning ordinance perspective, um, that does not apply here because of the chapter 833 doesn't require a minimum um, lot size for this particular zone. Thank you. Uh, if we could pull up the, uh, the standards for a uh, design standard variance, it'd be a good time to go through that. Uh, That's Hughes variance. Okay, uh, these are the standards that are set forth in the ordinance for granting design standard variance. Uh, they're based upon statute uh, as well as uh, having been supplemented by the ordinance. Uh, but in regard to the, uh, the standards, uh, as you can see, number three, the character of the property and the variance would not be altered, which substantially disparts from the characteristics sought to be achieved within the relevant zoning district. Uh, so I, even though they do not need a lot size variance under this ordinance, issues such as lot size, proximity to neighbors, impact upon natural resources, are all relevant for discussion and uh, uh, in determining the variance. This has been very helpful. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Borgman, you have your hand up. 
Yes, thank you. Um, I would just like to say that based on our research and based on planning's research, this lot was created in 1978, 43 years ago, and has existed as a taxable parcel with a parcel ID number since then. Whether it was created legally or not at that time, we do not know, but for 43 years, it has been considered a lot. Thank you. Is there any questions, any further questions from the board members? Does the- From the board members. I have a question, Mary Beth. Yes, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to Drew. Uh, what would be acceptable on the size of uh, the structure that uh, is the, that would be acceptable? Um, I don't know if planning staff has the um, ability to determine exactly what size or design would be uh, suitable. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Any further questions from the board for staff? Okay. Is there anybody on the board ready to make a motion? Well, uh, this is uh, Margaret, and um, I'm going to do my best here. I would like to maybe make two separate motions. Uh, the first is to deny the buildable area and eco area three um, uh, as per staff's recommendation, and uh, and also because I believe that no practical difficulties have uh, have been substantiated. And so that's my first motion. Okay, you, can we take these one at a time, Larry? Uh, sure, and are we, we can take them any way you want to take them. Oh, and, and uh, uh, so, I'm gonna make, so, I'm, gonna make okay. a I'm gonna make a request that we split them up as three. Okay, I think that's what Margaret was doing. Margaret, were you done making your motion yet? Um, well, I, well, those were two that I, I, it was the deny the buildable area and the eco area three variances. Uh, just so, for clear, just for clarity, uh, it, I, I think, uh, Skip's idea makes sense on this case since we have remonstrators present, uh, that, you know, I, again, they could either side can appeal this decision of the BZA. So let's, uh, if okay. It's okay with the with the board. If we can treat these as three separate motions, that will provide clarity for all parties. Okay. In case number VAR dash twenty one dash twenty three A, buildable area. The re variance requested is a variance to the uh, chapter eight hundred four that uh, on the buildable area with anything over a 15% slope. And I am moving that we deny that request. I'll second that motion. Okay, uh, the motion is on uh, variance number 21-23A, uh, Perry Buildable Area 15% Slope Variance in Chapter 804. The motion is to deny the variance. Again, a motion in favor is a vote to deny. Uh, Margaret Clemens? Yes. Uh, Skip Daly? Nay. Uh, Mary Beth Kasmarczyk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Okay, uh, the variance is denied by a three to one vote. Okay, and then with case number VAR 21-23B, and this is the request is for a variance to chapter 825 regarding the eco area three slope. Um, I recommend, or I'm moving, that we deny that request. I'll second that motion. Okay, the motion is to uh, deny variance 21-23B, Cary Eco Area 318 percent slope variance to Chapter 825. A vote in favor is a vote to deny. Uh, Skip Daly? Yay. Okay, Mary Beth Marchek? Yes. Thank you, Sorensen? Yes. 
Robert Clemens. Yes. Uh, the variance is denied by a four to zero vote. And on uh, case number VAR-21-23C, dash dash uh, regarding uh, the front yard setback requirement from chapter 833, um, based on the neighbor's uh, remonstrations for suitability and compliability with the neighborhood uh, aesthetics, I recommend that we uh, I move um, denial of that variance request. Does anybody second the motion? Oh, I second. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, I will call the roll on VR-21-23C, uh, Perry Front Yard Setback Variance to Chapter 833, motions to deny the variance. Uh, again, a motion, a yes vote is to a motion to deny the Front Yard Variance request. Mary Beth Smarchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Skip Daly? Nay. Okay, uh, the variance is denied by a three to one vote. All right, thank you and have a good evening. Okay, next up we have case number VAR-21-37 and that is Tammy. Um, so Tammy is out um, this week, so I will be covering this one for her. Um, so thank I you, will um, go ahead with this one. Um, so it's 8824 South Rockport Road. It's an Indian Creek Township, Section 22. It's uh, a 8.15 acre parcel. Okay, so the request is one design standards variance, Chapter 802. Um, there's a uh, current structure on the property um, that is 3,072 3 square foot ag building built circa 2004. Um, but it did not receive an improvement location permit until 2017. Uh, the petitioner is requesting this variance to add an additional 3,680 square feet to the existing structure um, under a new residential uh, application permit. Um, this would bring the total structure's size to 6,752 square feet. Um, so the maximum size for a residential storage structure on a lot without a primary use uh, meaning there's no single family residence or any other primary use on the property um, is limited to 1,750 square feet. Um, as soon as another principal use is on the property, um, there is no restriction aside from um, regular um, zoning lot standards that um, attribute to um, lot coverage or um, impervious surface coverage, depending on the zoning district. Um, so this particular property is um, lot number four of the Weiniger's third sliding scale. And then there's a property directly to the north of this uh, property with a residence on it, which is lot number one of the Weiniger's second sliding scale subdivision. Um, so planning staff uh, feels that they could combine lot four and lot one uh, together uh, that are already connected via a driveway um, uh, between the two lots that would essentially nullify the need for this variance um, and the um, remove the limitation of the 1,750 square foot storage structure requirement. All right, so uh, as I said before, the existing structure is 3,072 square feet. Proposed addition is 3,680 square feet. Um, here's the definition of the residential storage structure um, per chapter 802. Um, additionally, I will note that during planning staff's review of this petition, um, it was discovered that neither a stormwater present, uh, uh, prevention plan um, nor the Rule 5 documentation was properly filed with IDEM um, during the 2017 subdivisions. So uh, staff will work uh, towards compliance with this respect um, later down the road uh, for this property. I just wanted to mention that as part of the review process here. Um, so here's a location map, Indian Creek Township along South Rockport Road. Um, here is a image of the um, sliding scales that were all done by the uh, petitioner. Uh, they own almost all of the lots that were created from the sliding scale subdivisions. I think only one of the lots 
um, was sold or is not under their ownership anymore. Um, but the highlighted one here is where the storage structure is. You can see it there where the cursor is. Um, and then there's the connected driveway to the uh, lot one of the second sliding scale, which is where that current residence is. Um, here's the slope map for the property. Again, you can kind of see the residence as well as on lot one to the north. And then you can see the um, storage current um, ag building storage structure um, on the uh, lot that's um, highlighted here. <clears throat> um, you'll also note that um, there appears to be some sort of dirt track um, on both of these properties. Um, so that is also a raise for concern for planning staff in regards to um, what the intended use of the structure is, um, if it truly is for agricultural purposes um, for that agricultural classification, um, or if it's just residential storage, um, because the, the dirt track doesn't necessarily fall under the guidelines of um, agricultural um, classifications. Here's some site photographs and some um, um, viewpoints here. Just a few more photographs and aerial pictometry of the site with the storage structure as it stands currently and the residents in the background. And here we have the letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals, um, as well as a little bit more detail of the rationale behind um, the uh, uh, proposal for the addition to the existing storage building. Some more details here of the site plan and the construction plans for the addition. And here's a little bit more zoomed in to kind of see more of those um, uh, measurements and details of the site plan. <laughs> All right, so overall staff recommends denial of the variance um, for the residential storage structure size from chapter 802 in that the petitioner could combine properties with the adjacent residential lot owned to the north, which would effectively nullify the residential storage structure size limitation and would not need this variance um, and they would not be limited by square footage. I will not take any questions. Does uh, the board have any questions for Drew? Seeing none, is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Hello, my name is Tom Weiniger. I'm the owner and the petitioner. Um, Mr. Weiniger, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. you can continue. Uh, my father passed away last year. He owns a farm down the road, Turtle Creek Farm. It's uh, 640 acres, uh, a lot of hay fields. And um, so I wanna bring his equipment home and then I'm gonna have to purchase some more equipment to take care of his property uh, so we can maintain it the way he wanted it maintained. And I, just for ease of access, I'd like it on my property. That's why I'm trying to build a barn. Any questions for Mr. Weiniger? Does the board have any questions for Mr. Weiniger? I have one. Okay. Mr. Weiniger, thanks for being here tonight. I have a question of why exactly um, adding on the way the planning department staff has suggested would not work for you. Well, this is the first I've heard of it tonight. And so there, uh, Anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, but they're saying that I basically, whatever you want to call it, bring two lots together, which is fine, I guess, in theory, but it's another three months uh, or so of having to go through it. So. I don't know that that's what they're suggesting. I believe, and Drew, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're suggesting having adjoining to the existing storage structure well that's what on a different lot because uh, the the lots are subdivided there is that is that what you're suggesting drew yeah let me add some clarification so um the petitioner is requesting to um, construct an addition 
to the existing um, uh, residential storage structure here, and it will extend to the south where the cursor is. Um, now, as it stands right now, the storage structure is on its own lot of record, um, being that it's um, in the Weiniger third subdivision, I believe. Um, it's lot number four. So this white parcel here is lot number four. Directly to the north is lot number one of a different sliding scale that was performed by the petitioner. Um, so instead of going through the variance process um, to get the residential storage structure size um, for um, um, the uh, proposed addition, um, because of the limitation that's based on uh, primary use of the property, um, planning staff is recommending that since the two properties are already linked by driveway, um, that if you just combine the two properties, it gives you that principal use. And then therefore you're not limited by the square footage um, for the um, storage structure. So you can build it however large you want, as long as um, you still have ample um, open space per the zoning ordinance, which with this acreage, you would most certainly would. Drew, could the storage facility also be drawn just on the north of that white line? Right there. Um, they they could put it on the residential lot, um, but it sounds like they want to build it as an addition to the existing um, uh, existing barn. Okay. I just want to make sure that the petitioner was aware of solutions that would not require approval of uh, of this board. Okay. Any further questions for the petitioner? Larry, did you want to add to this? I just want to get some clarification here. Uh, Mr. Winnegar referred to an ag structure. Uh, the variance for his request is for a residential yeah. structure. Um, and, and which is it? Is it an ag structure or a residential accessory structure? Because we may not have an issue if it's an ag structure. I can, I can, am I on right now? I'm sorry. I can barely hear you you larry but um I s yes it's an ag structure i store my tractor in there it was was the first building a ag structure as well yes i store equipment in there drew do you have any thing <laughs> So I think what had happened, Larry, before Tammy had left is that someone had applied for a permit for a residential accessory structure under our software program. Okay. And so as that application requires to issue an ILP for a residential storage structure, I believe that Tammy did reach out and try to see if the use of the building was purely agricultural, as in no ex residential accessory storage at all as in you know like motorized vehicles like atvs things like that, that are not related to maintaining a farm um, if that if you are using it for purely agricultural and not for a residential storage structure then we if we would not need a variance okay yep that's what i'm using it for Uh, might I suggest that we just continue this variance uh, to the August meeting and uh, we can have an amended uh, building application for an ag structure. And uh, if that's the case, then this would become moot uh, prior to the next meeting. Does that make sense to everybody? Makes Tom? sense to me. Tom, does that work for you? I, I, yes. yes. Okay, I can't hear. I really hear. I'm sorry. I don't know what's. I think, right. having, I think we're having internet Two problems. years tonight. of construction, probably. But yeah, uh, okay, sorry. Yes. So if we could so get I move the that we continue this till next, uh, until the August meeting. Second. Okay, I'll, I'll call the roll and continue this variance to the August meeting uh, to allow time to amend the application for an improvement location permit uh, to convert it to an ag structure, which would be permitted under the ordinance. Again, a vote in a yes vote is a vote to continue. Vicki Sorison? Yes. Mark Clemens? Yes. Kip Daly? Yay. Uh, Mary Beth Marchek? Yes. Okay, the contiguous is approved by 4-0 vote. 
and we'll update you in August. Thank you so much. You have a good evening, sir. Next up, we have cases number VAR-21-38A and VAR-21-38B. And that's Ann. Is Ann with us? Good evening. Hi, Ann. Um, so this petition is for two variances, one from the minimum lot size variance to Chapter 804, and a second from a front yard setback variance to Chapter 804. Um, so this property is located on East South Shore Drive. Um, a little bit of background is that the home that is existing is um, originally pre-existing non-conforming. So it was built in 1985, I think maybe a correction of 1986. Um, the home was built within, the home and an existing deck was built within the required 35 foot structure set back from East South Shore Drive. Um, there was an addition that was started to the home. Um, this addition enclosed the existing deck, so creating, um, uh, you know, four walls and uh, extending the roof line. The roof line extends over um, what they added is a, a ramp to the entrance. And then the roof line also extends over um, a little bit of the side of the home. So a little bit more than the original footprint, just because um, there was an addition of a ramp to the home. So uh, these are the petitioner site plans. Um, on the left is the existing home with the existing deck and how they're showing the, you know, the extension of the ramp and the landing area. Um, the bottom right, does show uh, the old electric meter, the new electric meter, and that they're enclosing that new, the what used to be the existing deck into a Four Seasons room. And then it shows the landing and ramp. So on the right is the photo that was original from the um, tax assessor's property report card. So that's the original. And on the left is now how it's existing today. Um, so you can see how the roof line is a little bit farther, you know, the deck has been, ex the original deck has been extended to include that ramp and it goes a little bit over the side of the home. <clears throat> Just a few more site photos from a different angle. Um, the photo on the bottom right shows, kind of gives you a general idea of proximity to East South Shore Drive. So the first variance, the minimum lot size, that is only triggered because technically not all other design standards are met, right? So they're also requesting that front yard setback. Um, so in the this property zoned suburban residential, and we've seen this before here um, around Lake Lemon, um, the SR zone allows the leniency of having a smaller lot size than one acre if all the other design standards are met. So. Um, occasionally, we do see that where you need to request one variance and the minimum lot size gets thrown on. So this property, um, the photo on the bottom left is half correct. There's also a second parcel. Um, if you can see my mouse, it's shown here. So they do own a little bit more. And in total, it's, it's just about a half an acre. Um, so the map on the right is a planning department generated map which just illustrates the properties that are nearby that are zoned suburban residential that are under an acre so um, this is very standard for anybody on bza that most of the properties are not quite an acre so staff does recommend denial for both of these variants variances minimum lot size and front yard setback um, because as Drew stated earlier, staff's position is to, um, you know, solely make a recommendation based on the ordinance. Um, this would be a self-created hardship. The front yard setback possibly could have been avoided um, and the minimum lot size variance is only triggered because of the front yard setback. 
Does anybody have any questions? Does the board have any questions for Ann? Seeing none. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Yes, the petitioner is here and would like to speak. Okay. State your name. Rita Breedlove. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Okay. Um, we are asking for this variance to move, continue to move forward with the Four Seasons Room as we did not change the footprint with the exception of adding the ramp in the position extending the roof where the shrubbery once was. They, it, we could not use that area with the shrubbery. As you exit, see, we have gone out no further than that concrete pad as it exists today, it still is there. We did break off a little bit piece of it. So to put the, um, the ramp coverage there, but we are not impeding upon the driveway nor any of our neighbors. Uh, we have not changed the footprint other than to extend the footprint and add the, ramp, the, the roof. As stated, the house was built in 1986, started in 1985. And so it was, based upon that air time frame, it was within accordance to the variance at the time. The variance changed in the 90s and every house out here is less than an acre. We're not impeding upon any septic tank or the lake. This helps my husband who had knee surgery this past December to be able to walk into the house. The It gives us the extra room to take off the clothes and, and just, it, it's just a room to help to utilize our home better and give us a little bit more storage space, but it's an all seasons room. We're not changing any of the um, duct work or anything like that. It would have a standalone heater, air conditioning. It would have three windows that are not there. So to see, it's going to actually, I believe, help to improve the structure and, of, and the appearance of the house. It has, will have a door between the all seasons room and an outside entrance into the all seasons room with another door into the home. So it's just basically giving us a, a, a way to utilize our home better. Um, there have been several homes that have been built in the last few years that are inside of that front yard setback, such as Dr. Sturgeon's down the road, who is on Lake Lemon, who's that SR I saw, and he has less than an acre, and he's within, he's not 35 feet, he's less than 17 feet back from the setback, from the utility setback. Therefore, I, we are requesting that we have the approval to continue and go forward with our all season room based upon the fact that there have been other residential homes um, built in the last few years <clears throat> that are inside of the front yard setback. And we're just asking to continue with our project and Therefore, we haven't changed the footprint, just, just a tad with the ramp and the roof. Thank you, Mrs. Breedlove. Does uh, the board have any questions for Mrs. Breedlove? None. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Seeing none. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Not seeing anybody. Uh, does, do you have a question, Skip? Yeah, just a real quick question for Ann. Ann, are there environmental or public safety concerns with this proposed uh, sunroom and ramp? I mean, other than, I guess what I'm trying to really ask is other than the fact that it's, you have to technically deny this, is, is there a reason why, why this shouldn't happen? 
outside of the front yard setback. Um, I do not, there are not environmental or utility concerns that I'm aware of. Now, with any kind of front yard setback variance, that is always a concern. Um, whether it's, you know, it always depends on proximity, how close you are to a presumed right of way. There's always the idea, whether there's right of way dedicated or not, um, that a road could potentially expand um, and that utilities buried where they are or homes that encroach um, could cause a, you know, a hazard in the future. Um, but as of right now, there's a, it's, the home was existing in the front yard setback. I have not heard of any plans to expand um, South Shore Drive, uh, but that does not mean that it's not plausible in many, many years. <laughs> there would be a whole lot of homes that would have an issue if uh, the South Shore Drive was expanded. I feel like we would know about that if that was going to happen um, possibly in the future, but that is always the consideration of any kind of front yard setback. It's it's pretty fair to say that most of the homes on South Sewer Drive are within that setback or over are closer to the road than they should be. And the BCA just, certainly sees a lot of cases for yes, we do. Area. Yes, we do. And I'm sure we'll see more. Uh, any other questions for staff or the petitioner? I just have a question for Larry. Um, would this be another one of those that makes sense to split it up with uh, with two motions? Uh, we can always do that. Um, sometimes uh, in the interest of uh, brevity, we combine them, uh, but we, we always can do them as separately if it's desired to board. If I may oh, interject. Sorry. No. So in this scenario, it's kind of unique for the suburban residential zone. Um, the minimum lot size is only applicable for the front yard setback. So if there's an inclination that the front yard setback will be denied, the minimum lot size is an automatic denial. So it's kind of, it could be right. paired. This scenario. Okay. So it makes sense to do the front yard setback first hand set? Yeah. And then, the, then, then it kind of becomes a case where the last size variance is questionable, uh, questionable necessity because of the fact that we've granted a variance from the uh, setback. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult situation in this zone. All right, so, well, some, I'll make a motion if someone wants to go ahead and throw those variance numbers back up on the screen for me. Um, uh, all right. There you go. All right. Bear with me. This is my first motion here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to motion, uh, that, uh, on variant or, uh, VAR-21-38A, uh, the breed love minimum lot size variance to chapter 804. And I'm going to go ahead and couple that with VAR-21-38B, bravo. Uh, the breed love front yard setback variance to chapter 804. I'm gonna motion that we approve both of those. I will second that motion. Okay, uh, the uh, the motion is on uh, to approve for VR 21-38A and VR 21-38B, the breed love minimum lot size variance, chapter 804, and the breed love front yard setback variance to chapter 804, respectively. Uh, again, a motion, uh, a yes motion, a yes vote is a vote to approve both variances. Barbara Clemens? Yes. Uh, Skip Daly? Yes. Mary Beth Kasparczyk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Uh, both variances are approved by a four to zero vote. And All right. Congratulations, Skip, on your first motion. Very well done, Skip. You did a very good job. And thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Breedlove, and enjoy your home and your new addition to thank you. Have a good evening.
Okay, next up we have case number VAR-21-39. And Drew, that's you. All right, thank you. Can you hear me okay still? Yes. Great. All right, so this is the Rush Ridge Development Incorporated Eco Area 1, 12% slope variance, Chapter 825. It's located at 7220 East Merritt Drive, which is in Salt Creek Township, Section 28. Um, and there's a uh, second parcel involved with this petition as well. Um, it does not have an address, but I listed the parcel number here um, that you can see. And we'll, we'll see some images about which parcel it is and how it pertains to this uh, variance petition. Um, so the request is design standards variance, chapter 825, for the 12% slope, which is area one of the environmental constraints overlay um, area. Uh, the purpose is to construct a driveway through, which is lot four of the Rush Ridge subdivision, which is that address 7220 East Merritt Drive. Um, and they are building the driveway through this lot to access the parcel adjacent to it to the east, uh, which is along Lake Monroe, that does not have the address and ultimately develop a single family residence um, as well as a few other amenities um, on the site, like uh, I believe a pool, a detached garage, uh, et cetera. Uh, the petitioner maintains ownership of both lot four of the Rush Ridge subdivision and this uh, additional parcel to the east, which is adjacent to Lake Monroe. And the petitioner's representative has stated that the total disturbance for the driveways construction um, as well as the development of the residential areas uh, will approximate 1.61 acres or about 0.8 acres for each uh, parcel, uh, which would effectively trigger the rule five. So planning staff will be working with the petitioner and the petitioner's representative to get that documentation filed when the time comes. Um, so here's the location map. Um, so that uh, where the cursor is, that is the unaddressed parcel along Lake Monroe. It is outside of the subdivision, that um, the Rush Ridge subdivision, so it's unplatted. Um, and then the other uh, funnel-shaped parcel, um, that is the lot four of the Rush Ridge subdivision, um, where the driveway will be going through in order to reach um, some sizable buildable area that's lower than 12% um, on that eastern parcel. All right, so here's the slope map. Um, so at the end of the cul-de-sac, the lot four funnel-shaped parcel comes off. Um, and then as you continue east, you reach the easternmost parcel, which has a sizable buildable area where the petitioner is planning on building the residential um, uh, structure as well as the detached garage and pool. Um, but to get back there, you have to go through some of that buildable area, steep slopes, um, the, region, which uh, for area one of the environmental constraints overlay area, any land disturbance, vegetation removal um, under, or excuse me, over 12% um, triggers the need for variance. Um, so that's why we're here. Um, here's some aerial pictometry of the two parcels. Um, so here is a picture of the entrance to what will be um, lot four um, and the additional um, eastern parcel. Um, fairly wooded, so I did, wasn't able to get back there to look at the rest of the site. Um, and it, it, it slopes uh, quite a bit, as you can see here on the site plan. Um, so there is the possible driveway construction location through those steep slopes. Um, and then back to that buildable area um, that's less than 12%. And um, those are the uh, possible locations for the home detached garage and pool on that parcel. Here we have the Rush Ridge original subdivision flat. Um, it's oriented a little differently. Um, so to the right of your screen is north. Um, so um, you'll see the funnel shaped as if it was pouring down. Um, that's where lot four is. Um, the uh, Additional parcel to the east is not located. It would be off the screen here as it was not originally included in the subdivision plat. So overall, planning staff recommends approval with conditions as shown on the submitted site plan um, that uh, the construction of any driveway to access the eastern parcel would require an eco one variance regardless. Um, so the conditions for this approval uh, to allow the driveways construction in steep slopes is one, 
The petitioner submit a final plat amendment to combine the two parcels prior to permit issuance. And two, the petitioner submit necessary rule five materials with submission of a grading permit for review and comply with MS4 uh, coordinator requests for drainage improvements as needed. Um, so um, obviously the rationale between, behind the rule five is it's a requirement if you're gonna disturb more than an acre. And then the rationale behind condition number one is that um, since the property owner owns both parcels and you're gonna be building a driveway all the way through uh, that lot number four anyways, go ahead and combine them. Um, the final plat amendment is the process to do that based upon um, one of the parcels already being part of a subdivision plat. I will now take any questions. Does the board have any questions for Drew? I see no questions for you, Drew. This one looks like an easy one. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Hi, this is Daniel Butler with Bynum Fanu and Associates. I'm representing the property owner. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, and you're with who? Bynum Fanu and Associates. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. We can proceed. Um, there's not much I would add to Drew's presentation. Um, we tried to pick the best spot for the driveway to go through the steep slopes area. And just as a reminder, we're not asking for any variance for any home or um, construction down by the lake. It would just be for the driveway only to achieve getting down to that second parcel. Um, the only other thing I would add is that uh, the um, property owner uh, is requesting and um, it's not a deal breaker for them, but if you see it as uh, um, as something that you would approve to keep the both the lots um, separate, so not condition number one. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Butler? Quick question, Mr. Mr. Butler. Um, is there an intention on the property owner to propose a, um, a residence or another structural building in the, what has been described as the funnel property, or what is your objection at that point to merge the two properties? That's correct, sir. Uh, there's no plans as of right now, but he wants a potential for another home. Um, that would just be in the buildable area of the funnel property, not again in the, the uh, steep slopes of that, but just wants the possibility of that in the future. If you, again, it's not a deal breaker if you don't see it that way, but uh, they just wanted me to ask. All right, uh, now I'm gonna ask a quick question of Drew. Would staff object knowing that there's a possibility of, of having something else in a buildable area on that funnel property? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I may have Larry or Jackie weigh in. Um, I just know that uh, when it comes to providing access from through a property to another property, um, we just need to make sure that um, easements are recorded appropriately. Um, you can't record an easement to yourself um, so, uh, I would just want to make sure that we are following all the guidelines appropriately and don't run into any issues with that. Um, I guess if they were to keep both lots separate, um, and then later down the road sold the property, then an easement could be recorded between the two parties. Um, but again, I, I just want to make sure, um, planning and zoning standards, um, are being met with that type of request. So Larry or Jackie? Uh, I believe if the lots are not merged, then the, uh, the so-called funnel lot, uh, we, we need to have some type of a plat amendment to plat the easement on that lot going back to the lot lakeside lot uh, prior to issuing an improvement location permit for it. In other words, I think that if it's not conditioned that they be combined, 
it may still end up being a requirement to get a building permit to build back there, but we could figure that out after the BCA process. They wouldn't necessarily have to merge the lots, but they would have to plat the easement going back to it on the uh, plat for Rush Ridge subdivision. And this is Daniel. Be, this yeah. is Daniel again with Bynum Fanning and Associates. I uh, just want to mention we have no problem with recording a non-exclusive easement on that. Um, so Drew's talking about an exclusive easement for two property owners, and if that's the way it can be recorded now, we can do that. But we're we have no problem recording some kind of easement that would go through there. What I'm what I'm saying, I believe Daniel, it would have to be put on the plat through a plat amendment. Larry, this was also the parcel that during the plan commission meetings to approve the subdivision intentionally was left without an access point and was quoted as saying they can access this parcel by boat. So I'm not sure if the intention when they did this subdivision was for this lot to either not be built upon or be combined or there be a plot amendment but just so Daniel and the board is aware, even if there's not a condition that they be combined, it may ultimately be something that we require before we can issue building permits, but we could look into that. Well, the one thing I do wanna mention is that the recorded easement uh, will reduce the billable area of the, of the uh, funnel lot where it goes through that narrow portion of Probably, con probably considerably. Yeah. Well, uh, I have a question. If uh, we're changing the nature of the request, um, do we need to make a different notification or publication of the meeting? No, I, I, I don't think there's any need to redo the okay. notice on this. I think it's just a question of whether what condition you want to add uh, as Jackie said, we will be whether there's a condition or not. It's going to be addressed at the time the the try to obtain an improvement location permit. I'll also note that um, the area where my cursor is right here is not meeting the lot width requirement. So I think Drew touched on this briefly, but anyone that wants to develop this lot would have to go through this steep slope area. Um, in order to meet the lot width requirement of this zone. So the buildable area minimally would have to be built back here, but it just so happens that the petitioner site plan shows it as being built here. But what you're approving is simply the roadway disturbance through this yellow reddish area because it's in the 12% slope restriction for driveways and utilities. If I may ask one more question um, of the petitioner or the representative of the petitioner, um, Daniel, is it? Daniel Butler. I, yeah, um, I, I was wondering if anything that's been discussed at this point uh, would have you desire to go back to the drawing board and kind of rethink before you, you we you know, ask for a, a variance vote on, on something here. Uh, if you want to go back and, and reconsider something at this point, I don't, I don't know if that is where you're, th where you're heading. No, not at all. We, uh, the driveway that you see there is how it would happen, how we would um, set it up now. And again, we would set up all of the buildings and the septic field um, in the buildable area at the end. Um, and so no, we would just um, just want the opportunity in the future for them not to be combined lots, just in case there's interest and um, we can find additional local area at the, you know, the pie shaped lot or the uh, funnel shaped lot. Okay. All right. Is there anyone else here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition? Could I just ask one question? Uh, how, how large is that funnel property? How many acres? Um, one moment. Let me see what I can find here. Thank you. I think it's 7.3 acres, and okay. the additional lot is 4.44 acres. Okay, great. Thank you.
Okay. Is there anybody else here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition? Seeing none, is there anybody here that wishes to speak against this petition? Seeing none, are we ready to make a motion on this? Vicki, you gonna make a motion? I guess, well, I guess I would want to know exactly what condition that we're supposed to put in about this easement or I'm a little confused on what we should I, be doing there. Jackie, uh, you chime in on this if you disagree, but it seems to me that uh, we could just eliminate the number one condition and just have the second condition as the sole condition. Yes, okay, okay. Well, then I'll make a motion on case number VAR-21-39, uh, Eco Area 1 Slope from Chapter 825 Variance. I move to approve with the condition of petitioner submit necessary Rule 5 materials with submission of a grading permit for review and comply with MS4 requests for drainage improvements as needed. I'll second the motion. Okay, I'll call the roll. Motion, motion is to approve variance 21 39, uh, the equal area one variance through chapter 825 for the uh, Race Ridge Development property uh, located in uh, 7220 East Merritt Drive. Uh, again, uh, subject to the condition that petitioners submit necessary rule five materials, the submission of a grading permit for review and comply with MS4 requests for drainage improvements as needed. Uh, the motion is to approve the variance subject to the condition. Uh, again, a, a yes vote is to approve the variance. Skip Daly. Yay. And Mary Beth Smarchek. Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Barry Clemens. Yes. The variance is approved with the condition by a four to zero vote. Thank you, Mr. Butler. You have a good evening. Thank you. Next case we have is case number VAR-21-41. And that is Rebecca. Hi, thanks, Mary Beth. Um, so this is a use variance request, um, which is different than what you've been hearing tonight. Um, previously, they've been design standards variance requests. Um, but in this case, we're, uh, the petitioner is seeking a use variance to allow for multifamily. Um, so this is uh, one uh, parcel that contains 3.53 acres in Clear Creek Township, Section 17, and it's located at 8023 South Old State Road 37. Um, and the comprehensive plan has designated this rural residential. So um, I do want to note to the board members that in the in the packet material you received um, in my report uh, towards the top there, I listed standards for um, a use variance approval. And actually, um, by mistake, it was I inserted the design standards um, uh, uh, standards. So I want to take a second, and Larry can weigh in here if he wants to as well, but just to quickly go over um, the standards that we look at for approving um, a use request, use variance request. Um, and so for the benefit of anybody that is not um, able to see the screen, I'll just read it quickly. In order to approve a use variance, the board must find that A, the approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, and general welfare, welfare of the community. B, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property included in the variance will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. C, the need for the variance arises from some con condition pe peculiar to the property involved. And D, the strict application of the terms of the zoning ordinance will constitute an unnecessary hardship if applied to the property for which the variance is sought. And E, the approval does not interfere substantially with the comp plan. 
especially the five principles set forth in the Monroe County Comp Plan, which include one, residential choices, two, focused development in designated communities, three, environmental protection, four, planned infrastructure improvements, and five, distinguished land from property. And again, this comes from uh, chapter 812 of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance. Um, and again, I think we've touched on this tonight, but um, here I have included the definition of a hardship or unnecessary hardship, which is significant economic injury that A, arises from the strict application of this ordinance to the conditions of a particular existing parcel of property, B, effectively, effectively deprived the parcel owner of all reasonable economic use of the parcel, and C, is clearly more significant than compliance cost or practical difficulties. Um, so this definition comes from Chapter 801. Uh, so just as I lead uh, here into my presentation, I wanted to put these, um, this information before you uh, so you can, um, you know, be aware of the um, information we use to make uh, our determination. Um, and this is the Indiana State Code stating uh, the same for uh, var use variances. I will not read this one out loud. <laughs> Okay, so in summary here um, before you is a request for one use variance to allow for multifamily. Um, the purpose is for the request is so that the petitioner who is also the property owner can recommission a converted pole barn for use as a single family residence. Um, and I will go, there's some history to this site and I will go into that here in a moment and hopefully lay it out so that you have a good clear understanding of what's occurred in the past at this location. Um, and the need for the variance arises because multifamily is not a permitted use in the zone um, where this part, what the, the zoning district of Ag RR, which is what this parcel is zoned. Um, and therefore it's triggering the use variance. And below um, these bullets, you will see a table here that shows uh, permitted the permit where multifamily dwelling is permitted and where two family dwelling is permitted. And you can see um, multifamily dwelling is not permitted anywhere in the county. Um, so, yeah, this thing. So, um, so, Looking at the history of this site, um, sometime between 2000 and 2006 and 2010, there was an existing pole barn on the property that was converted to a single family residence and there were no permits or approvals pulled um, when this conversion took place. At the same time, the property contained a duplex um, that was grandfathered in so on the property at this point is the duplex plus an accessory structure that they converted to a single family residence. Um, so in June of 2019, the planning department notified the property owner of violations and noncompliance. And this, um, this came to our attention through, I think, um, some uh, neighbor, uh, neighbor complaints, I think, actually, I'm, I'm not sure how it came to our attention. Um, but anyway, in, in November of 2019, the Board of Commissioners um, backed the Planning Department's directive to decommission the single family residence or that pole barn that was converted and submit for an after the fact improvement location permit. And so in order to for the Planning Department to approve the after the fact permit, uh, we first needed proof of decommissioning and um, further, the property owner needed two variances, uh, side setback and minimum lot width um, in order to get that uh, ILP, which is the permit that the planning department issues. Um, and to note, both of those variances the petitioner sought back then um, were approved uh, in June of 2020. So um, this, picture is a visual of what that converted pole barn uh, looks like. Um, so again, they took the accessory structure that was meant to be a pole barn and, and really essentially converted it to a dwelling unit. 
Um, and so the, uh, this is the site plan that was submitted to the planning department when the petitioner at the time, who is not the petitioner today because it was a previous owner, um, this is what they submitted as part of their materials to get the after, after the fact uh, improvement location permit. Um, so you can see quite clearly that they added uh, structures that would make it a living or dwelling unit. Um, so this is, so um, what we're looking at here is um, some photos that were submitted just to prove that the decommission took place. Um, so they did remove bathrooms. Um, actually, here they are. Uh, one, disconnect and cap off septic system, cap off water, main to structure, remove the toilets and cap, cap off toilet drains, remove sinks, vanities, and shower fixtures, and disconnect water line to sinks, toilets, and shower fixtures. And then um, we, planning department, did get in February of 2020, an affidavit that the uh, homeowner petitioner at that time did indeed uh, do the decommissioning work. And these are supporting photos of that work. Um, so all the, all the items that we outlined to the property owner to do to meet the decommission objective um, are photographed here on the left. So we wanted to um, include this information for you, um, like I said, because there's a lot of history on this property. And um, I think it's, you know, uh, important for you all to know the back story. Uh, so uh, these are site photos of what the parcel and the structure look like today. Um, so what you're looking at here is the accessory structure turned single family residence. Um, and this is the stru structure that the petitioner would like to uh, recommission into a single family dwelling unit. Um, and so because there's a duplex already on the lot, um, it essentially triggers the need for this multifamily use variance. Um, more photos. Uh, the photograph on the left is looking at the back of the house as part of the pole barn alteration, they added decks. Um, and then this photograph on the right um, is a picture of the, of the structure in, uh, after the current petitioner um, has had purchased it. So picture on the left is looking from the accessory structure slash pole barn um, to the duplex I have mentioned. Um, and then picture on the right is uh, looking down Old State Road 37. So here is the letter the petitioner submitted to the Board of Zoning Appeals um, explaining her history. And on the right um, is an aerial photo because I think it's useful to understand what this parcel looks like and what the relationship is physically of the um, accessory structure in the existing uh, duplex. So um, staff recommends denying this use variance request based on findings of fact. And our primary rationale is that um, there is no evidence that the property can't be utilized under one of the permitted uses already listed and allowed in the Ag RR zoning district. And with that, I will take any questions. Does the board have any questions for staff? Seeing none. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, can thank you, you. State your name, ma'am. My name is Ruth Hughes. Ruth, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. All right, go ahead. I would like to start by thanking Rebecca for a very clear and concise presentation from her data. Um, the, the property uh, was um, something that my daughter and I purchased so that I could possibly have a place to retire. And um, I fell in love with it because it was out in the country and I wanted to um, utilize that space for gardening. Um, I have been exploring the property 
Um, it has been neglected for a very long time. And I started cleaning it up immediately. The neighbors were glad to see that happen because of the some of the old farm equipment looked like it had been there for many, many years, possibly before the people owned it before me. And my objective was to be able to live here, clean it up, make the neighborhood nicer. The people who sold us the property volunteered to evict the people, the tenants, and I felt that would have been a hardship on that, those families. So my daughter and I decided that we would try to let them stay there. One of our options was to evict them so that there would only be one dwelling. But I felt that that was a rather cruel proposition, especially due to the national housing shortage and some of the other social structures that are causing people to be homeless, basically. And so we tried to go this route and I would like to be the one to clean this place up. It'll be much easier to do that if I get to stay here on this property. And by cleaning up, I mean really taking out trash, eliminating standing water and cutting back a lot of vegetation that had let go. We've already started doing all of this, as you can see the contrast from some of the pictures where I have cleaned it up and what it looks like. This picture right here that Rebecca just had on the screen, this whole area was full of broken tiles and construction materials. And I took those materials and turned it into a garden. And I, I just really, my heart just fell in love with this place and I really wanted to be able to make it better for the whole neighborhood. And that's what kind of got me started on this project. And if anybody has any other questions, I'll be glad to answer them to the best of my ability. I have a question. So you're currently renting half the duplex or? There, there are two families there now. Okay, and neither neither your daughter or you are living in that duplex currently. No, the other families are living there. My so daughter that's investment and, property for you then. Yes, my daughter and I were living together in town in a house in Bloomington proper, and I have been spending a lot of time out here trying to be a hands-on person because when we bought the place, it was just it was unkept it was unmowed it was untrimmed and as you can see well i mean you wouldn't know what it looked like before but we're trying it, to, your gardens look very lovely right now trying to clean it up <laughs> and your gardens the, look lovely all of the neighbors that i've spoken to were very happy that we showed up because the property had been neglected for so long and they didn't want it to be the way it was uh, does anybody else have any questions for the petitioner? How far away is the closest neighbor? I'm not getting an idea from this picture. Um, well, the tenants would be neighbors to this house, and there are neighbors. Property neighbors. There, there are neighbors, um, well, right across the street and right to the south of me. Okay, there's my closest neighbor where the little um, cursor is. And then the same family owns all of this property here up above um, to the north. And then um, the farm across the street is owned by four or five different family members, all of the same family. And they, the people across the street three generations ago owned all of the land on both sides of the road. And it's a lot of fun to hear them tell stories about the grandparents that worked that land at one time. So what is it you have in mind to use the uh, barn structure for? Well, it was converted to a house. It has the original workshop and one of the garage that I guess were part of the pole barn. I never got to see it, but they simply I guess the man, the man has passed away who built this structure. 
And I guess he thought that he could just add, as long as he kept part of the original structure, that it was okay to add on to it. I don't really know because I never got to speak to him. What What are your intentions for the property? I, I would like to live there as my permanent residence and clean the place up. So you didn't want to live in the duplexes. Got it. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions for the petitioner? Okay. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Mary Beth. It's Rebecca again, if I can interject. Yes, go ahead. So I uh, did, re before tonight's meeting, I did receive a letter written on behalf of Ruth in support of this use variance. Um, I didn't get it in the pack. I didn't get it in the packet and I didn't get it in the presentation, but it, it was formally submitted and it is in the case file. So I did want to mention um, that Ruth did receive one letter of support for her request for a use variance. Um, and if that's a document you all want to look at, um, I think we can probably retrieve it pretty quickly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone else here that likes to speak on behalf of this petition? Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Seeing none, uh, would somebody like to make a motion? Um, I'd like to just ask a question now. Oh, that go ahead, Margaret. I'm sorry. That's okay. Well, you know, just in reading the report, it seems like there's been a long history on this property to um, uh, revert it back from uh, an abuse of its use. And I'm, um, you know, that was finally achieved in 2020. And then it seems as though the seller either misrepresented or the owner, the buyer misunderstood what was allowable on this property. And I, uh, I just don't know how we should, how to think about perpetuating a, a non-conforming use, you know, that's, that's my deliberation right now. And I wondered what the, my fellow um, colleagues on the plan commission feel or think and what the planners feel and think. Uh do you mean zoning board or planners? Well, the zoning board, like uh, the professionals. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Do you have your hand raised? I do. I have a quick question for, for Rebecca. Um, is there seemingly a public safety uh, or a nuisance or a environmental negative impact from the variance uh, proposal? Rebecca, I am muted. Yep, sorry, I was muted. Um, so one, one thing we are thinking about for this parcel in particular um, is the septic situation. It is on septic out here. Um, so we'd want to make sure uh, you know capacity existed or that the proper septic in place um, to accommodate multi-use if that is ultimately um, you know allowed out here. Um, I, I, I'm not aware of any other uh, concerns related to uh, nuisance or um, that kind of thing that planning department would be concerned with. Um, so primarily it would be septic and just the intensity of the proposed use in a zoning district that where it's not really allowed. Could we potentially put a condition on an approval if a motion were to make its way to the table that included a planning staff um, approved septic system for the use? Uh, well, just to clarify, in order to grant the use variance, you have to make the findings that are set forth 
by the statute and by our ordinance. Um, and that is a finding of undue uh, hardship, uh, unnecessary hardship. And in effect, and, and Dave Schilling, uh, our attorney can chime in on this, but it, it requires a finding that there's not an economic use of the property without the use variance. Um, it's, it's a tough uh, burden to meet. Uh, I do note that uh, Ms. Hughes, I believe, was informed of the limitations on the property prior to purchasing it. Uh, and if I'm wrong on that, we can clarify that. But my understanding was that the status of the property was discussed with her, the limitations were discussed prior to her purchase of the property. But uh, regardless, in order to grant a variance, you have to make a finding that basically the owner has been deprived of all reasonable economic use of the parcel without granting the use variance. Dave, if you want to comment. Wouldn't this be spot zoning too? Well. Spot zoning is when the plan commission and the commissioners would zone this multifamily. Uh, I see. It, okay. it refers to an ordinance that okay. makes a zoning change that's inconsistent with the overall comprehensive plan. Yeah. Okay. And just to clarify, multifamily is three or more dwelling units on a property. So three or more, so multifamily could be more than three. Yeah, can you hear me now? This is Dave. Yes, yes. we can hear you, Dave. Yeah, Larry uh, hit that uh, the standard on the head there. You have to show that the property would be basically economically worthless unless the variance is obtained, which in the context of a, of a, of a double rental on the property, um, might be a challenge, yeah, obviously. but uh, yeah, that, that would be a challenge. challenge. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. If nobody else wants to make a motion, I can go ahead and make a motion. All right, I'll go ahead and make the motion. Uh, case number VAR-21-41, use variance to allow multifamily, uh, chapter 802. I move that we deny the motion. Our, our motion is to deny the, the, the use variance for multi-family to chapter 802 based on the findings of facts. I second the motion. Okay, I'll call the roll and variance 21-41. Uh, the use, use variance for the property located at 8023 South Old Road State 37. A, uh, the motion is to deny the use variance based upon a uh, Failure to satisfy the requirements of brain use variance based upon the standards set forth by statute in the ordinance. Uh, again, a motion to a yes vote is a vote to deny the use variance. Uh, Barry Beth Kasmarchuk? Yes. Vicky Sorensen? Yes. Robert Clemens? Yes. Skip Daly? I abstain. Okay. Uh, the motion to deny is approved by a three uh, vote in favor of denial with one abstention. Thank you, Mrs. Hughes. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Okay, next up we have case numbers VAR-21-42A, VAR-21-42B, uh, case number 21-42B, and this is you again, Rebecca. Thank you. Uh, so 
This is a variance request to the buildable area uh, requirement in Chapter 833 and the karst and sinkhole development standards in Chapter 829 for property that's located at 3316 West Jordan Court. Uh, and it contains 0.39 acres in Van Buren Township, Section 13. And it is currently zoned RS 3.5. And the comp plan has it as conservation residential. So um, again, two design requests are being sought here. Um, the purpose is for the construction of a 12 by 16 foot shed that will is being proposed to be located in slopes that are greater than 15%. And in addition to that, um, the location of the structure is not meeting the requirement of a 50 foot setback from the rim of a sinkhole. Um, and this requirement applies for structures. Um, so here we have some site photos. On the left is where the petitioner was wanting to build his structure before he learned that he needed a variance in order to continue. Um, and you will note on that left photo that he has started with um, concrete piers. Um, can address that more in a minute. Um, picture on the right is a shot of the petitioner's backyard. Um, you can get a sense of the slope um, and it's hard to point out, but back towards the back of the lot there near the trees, a little over to the right, Jackie, um, is a sinkhole. Um, so this is a photograph on the left looking um, up the yard. So um, the position of the shed in this left picture would be off to the left. Um, and here on the right is a photo um, again of the location of the shed, um, just more of a close up. So. Um, this is a picture looking at the front of the house um, along the side where uh, we staff feels that the shed could potentially be relocated. Um, and I'll get to this further in just a second. Um, here is the letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, on the left, on the right is hit the petitioner's site plan. Um, I think I have another slide in here that shows the contours. Jackie, you might skip skip one more if you would, please. Um, there we go. Um, so the issue uh, is that the contour highlighted in yellow um, is the closed contour that we start um, sort of measuring from. And the proposed shed just is not clearing the 50 foot, based on the site plan he submitted, it's just not um, clearing the 50 foot uh, requirement um, away from that rim. Um, so if you will flip back now one slide. Um, so in this case, the staff does recommend um, to denial of the design standards variance to the buildable area, which is 15% slope, um, with the rationale that the petitioner could relocate the shed outside of the 15% slope thresholds. Um, that is referring, that sentiment there is referring to the picture I showed you previously with the blue arrow. Um, and regarding variance 21-42B, um, recommending that uh, the recommendation is deny the design standards variance to the sinkhole conservancy area standard in chapter 829 based on finding the fact, findings of fact. And once again, um, it, we feel the petitioner could relocate the shed outside of the CSA setbacks. And if um, a relocation is possible, you know, an option, then the shed would, or location of the shed, new location of the shed would eliminate the need for um, either variance. Uh, so with that, I'll take questions. Does the board have any questions for Rebecca? Is 
Seeing none. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Yeah, I'm here. The, Did your uh, name? Uh, Corey Kiddington. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yeah, yes. Okay, go ahead, Corey. So the reason I picked that particular spot for the shed is because there was really no other spot in the backyard to put it. it all the other spots are fairly sloped and where it's not there's a lot of vegetation um the other the my problem with putting it on the side there is that if you go to the photo that depicts the side of the house most of that i mean if you look uh in the center of there that's my neighbor's fence back there and if you split that property line right there, it's only 13 feet from the side of my house to that where her fence would go straight if you extended her fence out. So at 13 feet, you would still need a, um, I think in this area, it's eight to 12 feet setback from the property line. But the main issue is, is that all of the watershed from my house uh, from both levels of my house and all of my front yard and my neighbor's yard goes down this valley there um, where the proposed shed would go. And to me, that would be highly restricting all of the water. I, the water would have nowhere to go um, for my house or my neighbor's house if I was to build a shed right where it, it naturally travels down. Uh, the back rear spot where I picked is relatively, I don't really see a, a large uh, problem with it being there um, other than these particular things, which I think the slope uh, variances could easily be um, overcome with concrete piers. It's all about the, the sinkhole uh, issue. But if you take into 50 feet of the rim, if you could depict where the rim is, I think my house is pretty close to that 50 feet mark. So really there's nowhere else to build it in the back. Um, the other problem with building it on the side there is even if I were to get a variance to allow me to build up to the property line or close to it, my neighbor, if you look at that thing, she is gardening on the side there. So I don't, really want to encroach upon her property line um, just to be a respectable, respectful neighbor um, because I would be <laughs> encroaching on her space there. And she, that's what she does. She's gardens and stuff. So I, 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 don't, re I don't really see that there's a problem. It's just a storage shed. Um, there's, uh, I, I guess that's really all I have. Uh, anybody have any questions for the petitioner? Okay. Uh, is there anyone else here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition? Is there anyone here that wishes to speak against this petition? Okay. Uh, anybody wish to make a motion? I will. Okay, go ahead. Um, after hearing the petitioner, and he seems very well intentioned on this and informed on his property, I am going to motion that on variance 21 42 alpha and variance 21 42 bravo that the bza approve his variance request okay uh i second All right, can I call the roll, Larry? Um, the vote is on variance 21-42-A and 42B. The motion is to approve both variances, the uh, karst and sequel development standards variance, 
and the billable area, 15% slope variance to Chapter 804, or the property located at 3316 West Jordan Court. Again, a vote, a yes vote is a vote to approve both variances, 41 or 21-42A and 42B. Uh, Margaret Clemens? No. Uh, Skip Daly? Yay. Uh, Mary Beth Kasparczyk? No. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Okay. Uh, the motion fails for a lack of majority. Uh, and uh, what we do when we have a two through vote is typically just continue it to the next meeting. Um, hopefully we'll have all five members of present and uh, we can uh, have a vote resolving the granting or denial of both variances. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So we will continue this till the August uh, automatically Continue this until the August meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals. All right, thank you. Next up, we have. Oops. That one already. Huh? Okay, the one in black. We have case number VAR 21 44. Rebecca? Thank you. Uh, so this is a uh, request for a variance to the minimum lot size uh, to Chapter 804 for one parcel that contains 1.07 acres in Van Buren Township, Section 32 at 8888 West <coughs> State Road 45. Um, it's currently zoned Agriculture Rural Reserve and the comp plan has designated it as rural reserve. And the petitioner in this case is also the property owner. So um, the petitioner would like to construct a new single family residence on the lot. Um, there is an existing uh, residence um, standing right now, but the plan is to demo that. Um, so in relation to the need for a variance in the Ag RR zone, the minimum lot size required is 2.5 acres. And this parcel, like I said, contains 1.07. So it is deficient. Uh, some site photos, uh, the existing dwelling structure that I mentioned is shown there on the left. And once again, the plan is to demo that and um, bring in a new uh, manufactured home. And um, the picture on the right shows rough location of where the new house would be. Um, uh, so the picture on the right is just showing there are some existing outbuildings on the lot um, and those will stay. Um, so letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals um, and then on the right side is the petitioner's site plan. Um, so he's meeting setbacks. Um, he's not violating any slope. His septic, he um, is in the process of getting a, a valid septic permit. Um, he's already had soil testing done. So the main uh, problem with this parcel before further development is just that it's not meeting the minimum lot size. And that's triggering the variance request. This is a parcel size map that just shows there are other parcels in the vicinity that don't meet um, the minimum requirement as well. So staff recommends approval of a design standards variance to the minimum lot size standard in chapter 804 based on the findings of fact and subject to county highway and drainage engineer reports. Um, and I will take any questions. Anyone have any questions for Rebecca? Yes, I do. Please, it's Cindy Grubb. 
And okay, Cindy, I, I, when I said anyone, I meant, does the oh, board have any questions? I'm sorry, Rebecca? my first meeting. Okay. My apologies. That's okay. That's all right. All right. <laughs> Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's your name, sir? What's your name? Jay Nicholson. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you, sir. Proceed. Uh, the reason why I'm wanting to put a modular home on is because the front part of this house was built in 1936. It's log, and it's starting to decay, and it's hard to keep up with. Uh, that's the one reason why we want to do it is because I just can't keep up with the log. And one, it'll help bring the property value up and... Uh, upgrade the septic and all that to bring the value of the property back up. Does anybody have any questions for the petitioner? Okay, is there, is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Is there anyone here that wishes to speak against this petition? No, I want the Mrs. Crabb, did you have something to say? Yes, I had a question, if I may. I noticed that is this um, variance to be granted if based on will the septic permit be allowed or has it been filed? That's my question. It looks like there is a septic permit. There is. Okay. Yes. That's fine. If there's a valid septic, we just, I own, we have, my husband and I own on three sides of this property and we were just to be concerned. And on behalf of Mr. Nicholson, yes, I think it would greatly improve the property. All right. Thank you, Ms. Scrub. Thank you. Is, is there anyone here that wishes to speak Mary Beth, against can I them? add something to that? Yes. Okay. So just to clarify, um, as of today, the septic, um, is still the septic permit is still being processed. Um, so I don't know that um, there's one completed yet, um, unless that's changed. Okay, I, I just saw the uh, septic um, permit number on yeah. here. So, but it um, last I looked, it was uh, pending soil reports. So I think it's in the you know, it's working through the okay. process. Um, so, um you know, and this it would, this would have to have a valid septic permit in order to proceed, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think that answers Mrs. Scrubb's question. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, somebody ready to make a motion on this one? May I say something real quick? I uh, did get a letter from the repair permit on the standard and the uh, documents on how deep it's got to go and all that for my septic permit. I got it like three days ago. Okay. Well, I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, the design standards variance to the minimum lot size standard in Chapter 804 of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance based on the findings of fact and subject to county highway and drainage engineer reports and the issuance of a valid uh, and complete septic permit. I'll second that motion. Okay. I will call the roll. The motion is to approve variance 21 44, uh, the Nicholson minimum lot size variance, chapter 804, for the property located at uh, 8888 West State Road 45, uh, subject to the conditions set forth in the staff report uh, and subject to the county highway and drainage engineer reports. Again, a motion, a yes vote is a vote to approve the variance subject to the conditions. Uh, Skip Daly? Yay. Ray Vesicus Marchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. The variance is approved by a 4 0 vote. Thank you, sir. You have a good evening. Enjoy your new home. You too. Thank you. All right. Next, we have case number. VAR-21-45, 
And Anne? Thank you. Um, so this is the BERT uh, Environmental Constraints Overlay Area 1 and 2. Um, so this is a variance from Chapter 825, which is the Environmental Constraints Overlay Chapter. Um, so their property is located in Salt Creek Township. It is five acres, and it's at 4739 South State Road 446. So a summary of the request is that Eco Area 1 uh, prohibits any earth disturbance for uh, areas that are sloped greater than 12%, and Eco Area 2 prohibits any earth disturbance in areas that are um, sloped greater than 15%. So the petitioners are requesting to build a approximately a 930 square foot single family residence into the hillside. Um, the property is approximately a half mile from Monroe Reservoir as the crow flies. So pictometry photos because they are somewhat invaluable in this situation that gives you a little bit idea of the slope, especially um, this, the picture on the top left gives you an idea that it's kind of situated on a ravine. So the parcel that we're looking at is at this kind of odd configuration um, with a, a steep point um, to the east. Um, so if you can see my cursor, the petitioners are kind of proposing to build here with a septic field approximately here. Um, so in relation to Lake Monroe, as you can see, this drainage ravine kind of follows down and it heads towards Lake Monroe here. So that's the half mile, even though the four, even though 446 is a little bit farther than actual lake access. So this is a submitted site plan. It does have contours. But they're not necessarily, um, the contour number is not depicted. So, um, I'll probably come back to this photo. So this little, this is a driveway. Um, it's also an easement that goes towards that home that we could see in the other photo. Um, this area gets a little bit more gently sloped. There's some buildable area here, which would be 15% um, and under. Uh, the eco area one kind of crosses here and goes to the east. And right around here is Eco Area 2 and goes towards the west. And Eco Area 2 is at 12% over here, and this is the 15. So that's what the petitioners have highlighted here in yellow. Um, so we see a house footprint, a proposed driveway from the existing drive, a septic field, and two septic tanks. So I went ahead and geo-referenced this site plan onto our, our buildable area raster, which shows, you know, slope percentage in, in colors and a gradient. Um, so in this area, we would still be looking at 15%. Um, this kind of drive area right here, where they're proposing the, uh, their, their new drive, is, from what I can tell, kind of an existing side drive here on this bottom right photo, that's just to the right of the existing driveway. So that kind of helps you relate to what we're looking at. There's some existing vegetation um, and kind of you can, let's see if I move this over here. You can kind of see that the slope begins to go, um, I mean, not too far. It's the pictures and having the site plan helped me visualize it and visiting the site definitely helped me see what the, the slopes were here. Um, so this is the drive leading in on the left and on the right is where we can see that kind of little clearing. Um, this was that previous photo area where the, the slopes start to drop off. So the top left is another photo of uh, where we were just looking at. Um, over here, so this would be the proposed driveway area with the home entrance somewhere over here. Um, this photo is looking around the bend like you're heading towards the petitioner's site. So you're coming into the property. 
this is coming out of the property towards 446. So you can see that it's steeper on the other side of the ravine. It does get a little bit less sloped when you head into the property. Um, so overall, staff recommends denial of the variance from the Eco 1 and Area 2 um, slope restrictions because it just seems like there's inadequate buildable area, that there could be a direct impact to drainage or soil erosion into the Lake Monroe Reservoir, um, and that there potentially could be space for the petitioner to relocate or redesign the proposed single family residence into areas that would minimize the slope disturbance. Um, specifically in the area that would be on the east side of the existing driveway easement. Um, so that's the third point, which is that it could be built on the east side of the easement. Um, the petitioner site plan does state that there'd be a 20 foot setback from the ingress egress easement, which is platted, but that is not necessarily a requirement under Monroe County Zoning Ordinance. So, um, that is, we would not require the 20 foot setback. Ideally in this scenario, we would see that the home is built more into the buildable area uh, versus into the steeper slopes. Does anybody have any questions? Does staff have any questions for, or I'm sorry, does the board have any questions for Ann? Seeing none, is the petitioners here and would they like to speak? Uh, sure. Um, I don't. Could you I state your name, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just Paul Burt. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I didn't actually see where the proposed uh, alternate site was, but uh, knowing the property, uh, quite well. We've we lived almost 30 years in the cabin next door and are good friends with the other neighbor. Um, there is, uh, I mean, other than moving it up into the driveway farther into that uh, setback, um, we'd still be into the slope. Um, we don't plan to go very deep. We're just, you know, as soon as we hit rock, uh, as far as the basement portion of the two story is concerned. Um, you know, so we only anticipate going down a couple of feet uh, to rock on that, uh, the upper side of that slope. Um, and um, as I said, I, I, there's not much space on that other side before it starts to slope down. Uh, there's a grassy area that might be a little less slopey, but um, you're literally talking about building literally right at the edge of the driveway and um, and you'd still end up into the slope area. So, um, you know, if, if that particular spot isn't uh, buildable, you know, especially based on the septic permit options, uh, I, quite honestly, I have no idea that the property is basically useless. I don't, I don't see where it could be built anyplace else. And again, we're only talking about a 955 square foot imprint of the house itself. Okay. Anyone have any questions for the petitioner? Okay. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Seeing none, is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Okay, does the board have any questions of staff or is somebody ready to make a motion for us? I can do it if you, if staff would put up their recommendation. Staff could do, throw back up that. Okay. Um, I would like to um, move that we deny the variance to the eco area one and two, the 12 and 15% slope restrictions for the following reasons. There's an inadequate buildable area with um, direct impact to drainage. 
and the petitioner could relocate the and redesign the proposed single family home to uh, minimize slope disturbance. And uh, additionally, it could be built on the east side of the easement. And so for these reasons and for the reasons stated in the staff recommendation, um, I'm going to move that we uh, deny the variance request 21-45 to eco area one and two to the uh, of a variance to chapter 825. I'll second the motion. Dave. 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 Come here, come here, Dave. Okay, uh, I will call the roll. The motion is to deny variance 21-45. The uh, Bird Eco Area 1 and 2 variances to Chapter 825 for the property located at 4739 South State Road 446. Let's go. Do I go? Uh, a, uh, based upon the uh, staff uh, recommendations of an inadequate billable area with direct impact of drainage, uh, the opportunities to relocate and design uh, move to minimize slope disturbance, and uh, Possible relocation. Uh, again, a motion, a yes motion is motion to deny the variance uh, to Chapter 825. Uh, Ravis Kismarchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Bernard Clemens? Yes. Skip Daly? Nay. Okay. Uh, the motion to deny is approved by a three to one vote. All right, thank you and you have a good evening. I believe that's it for this evening. So we're not back in person yet, are we? Uh, no, and it's probably unclear whether or not we're not gonna guess whether or not we will be in August or not. We will let you know as soon as possible. Uh, uh, we likely will be advertising for a hybrid meeting, which will be uh, some members of the BZA in person and some remotely. Uh, but again, the governor's order uh, allows the county to do virtual meetings through July. Uh, what the order will do in August, we don't know at this point. So we have to basically advertise with the flexibility of, of going either route. I don't know. It doesn't seem like a, we're doing too good in our fight against COVID at the moment. So we well, may be sure. virtual for a while yet. Well, that means we get to keep you longer, Mary Beth. Yes, it does. And, and I, I will stay around as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. And also, I just really, uh, having done um, one of those hybrid meetings with Jackie's help, um, it didn't turn out so well. <laughs> you know, it's pretty difficult to manage yet one more form of input. You know, we have the written input, we have the telephonic input, we have the Zoom input, and then the in-person meeting input. Uh, it, it was, uh, to me, it was like um, a tipping point. For me, it was a tipping point to have yet one more uh, feedback mechanism. It was, it was a little bit difficult to manage, which just increases my respect for staff and for all that you do and how you keep all this together and keep us going through all these uh, changing times. And I really appreciate everyone. All right. Thanks, I, everybody. Uh, Thanks everyone for powering through this agenda. It was a, a long meeting. Hopefully our agenda for August will be somewhat shortened. <laughs> Except for the ones we continued. <laughs> I move that we adjourn. I second that motion. All Thanks in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening, folks. Bye. Bye.